Hi everyone, this is Grace and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn how to decorate this cute Halloween set. So first up is the candy corn turned funny little cookie. <laughs> so uh, for this I am doing a one consistency outline and flood. And actually I'm doing that for the entire set here. That means that I am outlining and flooding with the same consistency. It is a thick flood. If you are counting seconds, it's around a 20 second flood. Um, if you're using a spoon, it will just barely trickle off the spoon in a steady stream. I'm also flooding in sections here, which means that I'm allowing each section to dry, um, to crust over before I go on to the next section so that, that there is definition in between the sections. Now here, I did the yellow first, now I'm doing the orange and then I'll do the white, but you could do the yellow and the white at the same time, let those dry, and then do the orange. I guess I didn't have my head screwed quite on straight for this one, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, do whatever works for you. I am using a scribe just to help a couple things settle out and give it a little jiggle because it is on the thicker side of a flood. And now here I am going in to do the last section. You can see here that I make sure that I pipe right up against the edge. I prefer to do this instead of using a scribe to help it join together. I think when you're using a scribe, there's a lot more chance to get it too close and then you kind of take away that nice definition in between the sections. So I let all of that dry mostly, get a good solid crust, and now I am piping the lettering. I am using a projector here and I will link the projector in the description of this video. And the kind of writing I'm doing right now is pressure piping lettering. So that means that I am varying the pressure on my bag to get different thicknesses. So on the down motion, you can see that I have a much thicker writing. And then on the up motion, I'm releasing pressure on my bag and lifting the icing off the surface. For the next part of writing, this is just pure consistent pressure on the bag because this is this lettering here is all the th same thickness so I want the same amount of pressure and often I actually find this kind of lettering can be the most difficult especially if your icing is a bit on the thicker side because there is less room for kind of error if your arm jiggles at all Sometimes when I'm doing, uh, when I'm using a projector, I will adjust it as you just saw there because maybe I feel like the image doesn't quite fit the frame or the letters are just a bit too close. And this is an image that I purchased from Etsy. Lettering, as you can see, takes a long time time a very long time so you want to be careful the amount of lettering that you add to your cookies for a set keeping in mind how many you have to make it's a big big time suck but often I find it worth it so I like to do it My lettering consistency here is a bit on the thick side, as you can see, especially with the black, because it's not quite settling. You can see the definition, but when it comes to lettering consistency, I would rather it be a little too thick than too thin. If it's too thin, then it you'll lose the definition in the letters, and that's a bummer. So there's that cookie. I'm just here for the candy. <laughs> Up next, we are moving on to the cauldron. Again, this is a one consistency outline and flood. And even when I'm doing one consistency, I can flood right up to the edge of the cookie. And that's because I really have a good sense of my consistency, how much pressure to apply on the bag, how much icing to use. 
how close to flood each line as I'm going through. If you're not comfortable flooding all the way to the edge, it's totally fine to give yourself a few millimeters um, of space around the edge and then you can use a scribe to help encourage it to the edge of the cookie. So I let that crust over and now I'm moving on to the bubbles here. This is a medium peak piping consistency. I can tell it's a medium peak because you can see as I'm releasing the dots that there's still a peak on the dot. If it was more like a soft peak, there would not be a peak on these dots. I wanted to make sure there was some good definition in between them, which is why I did a medium peak. Um, if <laughs> I say this a lot, but if I had more patience, I would go through and I would use a scribe to settle each peak on the dots. But alas, I have patience, but not that much patience. So I'm okay leaving the peak. Some might find it less than perfect, but it's good enough for me. The design is what's most important in my opinion. So now here I am sprinkling, sprinkling a bit of glitter just for some extra pizzazz. And then I am freehanding my lettering here. And I decided to freehand this largely because I couldn't find lettering in spacing that was exactly right for where I was applying it. And this is pretty simple lettering. So I wanted to challenge myself with some freehand. You could certainly use a projector though for this if you don't want to freehand. And what this resulted in is all of my boos that I wrote out were all a little bit different. And for some people, they want everything to look exactly the same, so I'd use a projector. If you're cool with it looking slightly different on each cookie, freehand away. I really encourage that. So that is our second cookie and the booze on a cauldron. Up for the third cookie. This is the jack-o'-lantern candy bag. And for this, first you want to paint that initial layer. I'm using flood consistency here, but I think it is better to um, do this with piping consistency because you'll get better coverage with less icing, but it doesn't really matter. I didn't need piping consistency white, so I wasn't gonna make that just for this. And here I am doing a little more glitter just for that pizzazz. I let this layer dry, that's really important. And now I'm going on to outline the jack-o'-lantern. And this is piping consistency. When you're doing a cutout design, it is really important to use two consistencies because you're just not going to get the definition you need on these cutouts if you're using a single consistency outline and flood. So I'm going in here and I'm outlining the shape, again, freehanding it, and I'm flooding immediately. If you flood immediately, that will get you the most seamless look between your outline and your flood. But <clears throat> if you are more comfortable flooding after the outline has dried, that is totally fine too. Operating under whatever your comfort level is, is a-okay. Here I am using a medium peak piping consistency for the handle. And this is a pretty big hole that I have cut in the bag, so I get a nice thick handle there. 
We'll make sure that handle dries before moving on to the next step. And that is to do the candy on top. And I'm using piping consistency here. Oh, I did make piping consistency for this set. So I don't know why I used flood on the other section, alas. So the first couple of sprinkles I am placing because I want to make sure that I get these bigger sprinkles in there. And then I'm going to use a spoon to cover the rest of it. In a second, I will use a spoon. There we go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I highly recommend doing sprinkles on top of a bowl. Please, on top of a bowl. It makes your life so much easier. Or maybe on top of wax or parchment paper. And there we have it. That is the jack-o'-lantern candy on top of the candy corn cutter. And last but not least, we have got our ghost. And again, this is a single consistency outline in flood. You can see here, so my cookie recipe spread a bit and you can't see the definition on the hands quite as well as the original cutter. So this is a great opportunity when you are actually doing your flood to give the definition that might be missing on your cookie itself if it got misshapen somehow or has spread a little bit. Um, use the icing to your advantage. So I let that first layer dry, and now I'm doing the detail. Again, this is a medium peak piping consistency. Actually, that green looks more like a soft peak to me. This orange is definitely a medium, medium peak. It's pretty thick here. See, it leaves that little peak when I release. I let that first section dry, crust over, and now I'm moving in to do the other section so that there's definition in between them. I let those dry as well, and then I move on to do the little bit of candy on the top, more piping consistency, more sprinkles on top of the bowl, as always. Super important that that orange and green has dried before you do this, otherwise the sprinkles are going to attach to the orange and green, which is not what you want. So I do the sprinkles, kind of massage them into place, and then I'm doing the cheeks here with a little edible dust and then a medium peak piping consistency for the mouth and the eyes. And then I will finish this off with an edible marker. And there we have it. That is the ghost, the cute little ghost. And that's the entire set. So I hope you have fun making this one. Happy Halloween. <laughs>